Hello, my Ecom learners. Welcome back to my channel. And uh, today I am so glad that I could share with you my talk as I was invited by our division to share my expertise in one among my favorite um, journalism categories during the time that I was still the school paper advisor of our uh, publication, The Mason. It's the English publication of Andres Minifasio Integrated School. And uh, just like what I said, I'll be sharing with you the things that I know when it comes to photojournalism. So I'll be focusing on its basics and some essential information about how we can make our student journalists take good pictures not only appealing or not only not only amazing in terms of its uh, technicalities but uh, very nice and very good when it comes to the story that the pictures are telling the viewers that's why it is a photojournalism because when we say photojournalism it's pictures and that showcase stories I usually begin my talk with a short energizer during my simple sharing in front of the student journalists of our division. I started with this very simple exercise that would test their logical thinking skills because I believe that a photojournalist must also develop his or her critical thinking skills because in taking pictures, it's not just as easy as clicking the shutter. So I presented this nine lines and what, my, and what the student journalist would do is actually to create or produce a car by means of connecting these nine lines. Fortunately, most of them, if not all of them, were able to come up with a very nice cars, different cars, by means of connecting these nine lines. Now, you could also try it in your class, in your journalism class, and you could modify it if you want. I would be showing you some examples of the cars that they were able to create out of these nine lines. So here are the cars. Okay, now the next that I had during my talk was to show them or to show the participants a series of uh, photos. And what they are going to do is they would describe each picture or they would just simply tell me something about the picture. So here are the pictures. In this first picture, a student said that the picture is showing us a father and a son. I was actually so moved by the interaction between the father and son in this picture. The child did not want to leave his dad. As you can see, his dad is a soldier and it seems that the dad is taking out something from his bag, maybe because he wanted to comfort his son who seemed not to want to leave his father at this very moment okay if you are going to really look at the picture it's really touching maybe the child here in the picture is very afraid that his father would not come back after living as we know the life of soldiers okay now for the second picture here a student said that it's very nice because it is uh, showing us the a beautiful scenery, a beach. Now I said, yes, it is quite nice 
because the photographer even used leaves as his frame. Unfortunately, the, the mistake or the error in the picture was that uh, there was someone in the picture. So there's a person in the picture, but it was covered by the leaves. It was not, uh, the, the person was not seen because of the leaves. In this next picture, it shows us the joy of freedom of the LGBT community in India after the Supreme Court of India discriminalized homosexuality. Okay, so that is the picture. And one of the participants in, in uh, that training said that uh, the picture showed that the LGBTQ plus seemed to fight for their, for their freedom. In the next picture that I have presented, someone from among the participants of the training said that it looks very pretty because it's showing us a flower. But if you are going to look and analyze the picture, there seems to be a problem because the yes the background is the background is blurred and maybe the photographer intend to do that because the photographer wanted to just focus on the subject which is the flower unfortunately most of the parts of the flower also is blurred so that seemed to be the problem okay the next is this picture it's a picture depicting what had happened way back then, years ago, in Australia, when there was a wildfire that affected a lot of uh, koalas. So in the picture, we have there a firefighter generously giving water to a koala. And the last picture that I showed them was this one. There, was, uh, there were two rabbits, which seemed to be playing. And the shot was perfect because the action and the movement of the, of the rabbits were really captured by the photographer. And even the dust or the sand were captured by the photographer. It's really nicely done. And of course, it was also observed by the participants of the training that the photo shoot or the picture was greatly photographed by the one who took the picture. So those are the five pictures that I have shown my participants and that they describe and tell something about. Now, the next that I did was to ask them of what's their idea about the difference between photography and photojournalism. When we say photography, it literally means drawing with light, which derives from the Greek word photo, meaning light, and graph, meaning to draw. The reason why I ask, my, I ask of the students in the training to draw a car out of the nine lines earlier as uh, an initial activity was because of the fact that photography means drawing. Only the difference is that they draw earlier using the, their pencils and their uh, ball pens. But in photography, we draw using the light that a camera emits. Okay? Now, when we talk about uh, photojournalism, it's a combination of two words. I told them that uh, it, it's uh, a fusion of two words. The word photo plus journalism. Photo means picture, while journalism means story. And if you are going to combine photo and journalism, you would come up with photojournalism, which means capturing pictures that show a story. Photojournalism is a specialized branch of publication, the art and science of photography combined with the written words. And the written words that we are talking about here would be the caption of the picture. But in photojournalism, it does not necessarily mean that we should always caption our pictures or the pictures that we are taking. Because it should be the picture itself is telling a story already, even without 
the caption or the written words. Then afterwards, I also ask the students to go back to the pictures that I have presented. And then I ask them of which among the pictures are photography and which are photojournalism. They were able to identify which among them are photojournalism and which among them are just simply photography. Okay. Now, I have also discussed some classification of photos in photojournalism during the time. And the first one that we have is news photography. When we say news photography, it is uh, to record the external world as it appears, meaning we showcase, we showcase what is happening in our society that are affecting the lives of us citizens either positively or negatively. Just for instance, in this picture, this is a picture that shows that a lot of people lined up in Kirino Grandstand during the time that we are about to have the Black Nazarene, the parade of the Black Nazarene in Manila. So that is a current event that of course is affecting the lives of the citizens because it showcases also their their belief in the Black Nazarene. And then next is we have spot news. A spot news photography is one among the types of news photography. It refers to breaking news event, unexpected, rapidly changing, newsworthy event of limited duration. So when we say of limited duration, it is referring to, to to occurrences in the community or in our society that happened on the spot, happened which happened unplanned. For example, here. So this example is uh, showing a civil society organization that staged a rally in front of the headquarters of the Asian Development Bank in Mandaluyong. So this, so this is something that would not happen every day, but it happened during that time, or maybe they are protesting about something. So of course you wouldn't see, you, you wouldn't always see rallies in the street. Okay, so this is what we call a spot news photography. Next is general news photography, which is still under the news photography. This is quite different to spot photography because it refers to newsworthy events and subjects that are planned. The spot photography, news photography is unplanned. This one is planned, expected, or predictable. So that means it would refer to capturing pictures about events that are planned and that are expected to happen. For instance, we have this one. So this picture is a picture taken in Baguio City during the Panagbenga Festival, which is annually happening in Baguio. So that's again what we call general news photography. The next is the sports news photography. From the word sports, automatic, it means that it's uh, referring to taking of pictures in sports events. So one example is this one, swimming. Okay, so this is one among the sports that the Filipinos love the most. So next we have feature story photography. In feature story photography, we are capturing photos that is unbound by time. So sometimes called evergreen because it does not fade with season but remain fresh. So it is going to showcase stories or, or a situation that existed before and that still is existing right at this moment so something like that the theme would be a theme or a concept that happened or accepted before and are still accepted as of the moment so that is feature story photography for example we have this picture showing that happiness is always seen in the eyes of a child so even before, we, we really believe that happiness is really in the eyes of a child. As you can see here, these two children are playing together. Maybe it's during a time when there is a rain and they are playing in the rain. 
okay, which still is happening even as of this time. So next is picture story. When we say picture story, it is a set of images that work together to tell a story or explore a subject. So meaning you are not just simply using one picture, but you are using set of pictures to create a story. So these pictures may have the same subject or may have different subject as subjects as long as they are interrelated, they are connected. Example is this one. So we have here three pictures. The first one is look at that boy at the right, at the left side corner, uh, who seemed to carry something. And we may say that this is a kuya. And in the Filipino culture, a brother, especially the eldest brother, is considered as someone who is responsible. Or we may say that even the eldest sister, we, we pay so much respect to them because we consider them as someone who would always be responsible so the picture below that boy is a child with a rosary it seemed that the child is being is being taught by an adult uh, how to pray which is another value that another values filipino values that we teach our children here in the Philippines. So next is at the left, at the right uh, side corner of the picture of a boy who is cleaning, cleaning maybe in front of their house. So that is also one values that we teach our children here in the Philippines. So the pictures are showcasing values, Filipino values uh, that we instill to our children. Okay, so they are connected. They are focused. In, they they focus in one theme or concept. So that's what we call picture story. The next one is documentary photography. So our first uh, classification is the news photography with a lot of types. Now next we have the documentary photography. Documentary photography in this uh, type or classification. Photographs or pictures are taken to vividly, concretely, and dramatically record events and people for study of history or origin of something, science and technology, or any other matter of human interest. Okay? So, documentary from the word document. You document a special event in the history or you document something which is of great interest to people who could see it or has a touch of human interest example is this one this is uh, lumpia of ilocosur so the photographer here would want uh, to showcase how ilocos uh, sur people or the people in ilocos are actually creating their lumpia that is an example of picture that will fall under documentary photography. Another example is this vendor, this vendor in the street. You might be wondering why the face of the vendor was not seen and was covered by the toy that uh, he is selling. Maybe it's because the photographer asked the vendor whether he could take a picture of him and then the the vendor possibly answered yes, but uh, requested the photographer not to show his face. So in that case, if that is the case, you have to comply. Of course, you have to respect the decision of the person that you are taking picture of, that you are taking picture of. Okay, so this has a touch of human interest because if this is going to be a documentary photography, then that means that the photographer is going to come up with a story of the vendor who's selling children a children's toy in the street okay so that's for documentary photography the next classification is commercial photography when you say commercial photography it is the use of pictures to advertise or to promote something example so this is a sagada weaver and the target of the photographer here is to promote 
somehow to help uh, the Sagada weavers also to have a lot of customers. The next is, if you love to eat in restaurants or fast food chain and you also are fond of taking pictures and posting it in social media, that is somehow also an example of commercial photography. Because you, you might not be aware, but you are already promoting the food in that particular fast food or restaurant. So again, that is an example of commercial photography. Now let's move on to how we can train our student journalists to take good picture because that is very important when it comes to photojournalism. One is, of course, we have to consider these two aspects. One is the technical aspect and then the second is the editorial aspect. When we say technical aspect, we are referring to the utilization of the camera, which I'm not going to discuss in here. What I'm going to focus would be the editorial aspect of taking picture. When we say editorial aspect of taking picture, this is to ensure that our student journalists are taking pictures with story, showcasing or demonstrating a interesting story. In order for our photojournalists to ensure that they are taking pictures, showcasing interesting story, they need to be knowledgeable about this element, composition. So when you say composition, the it is the arrangement of subjects or subjects in the picture. So this refers to where you are going to place the subject, the focus, and the most interesting part of the picture. Are you going to place it at the middle, at the left side, at the right side of the frame, at the upper, or at the bottom? So that's what we call composition. Now, how do we achieve composition, proper composition? To achieve the effective composition, you have to consider these three angles of view. So we have bird's eye view, normal view, or the worm's view. Let me discuss it one by one. Let's start with the bird's eye view. The bird's eye view is considered as an overhead shot. Okay? As you can see there in the example, in the example pictures. The next one is the normal view or the eye level shot, wherein, wherein the photographer and then the subject in the picture would possibly have the same level. Okay. Next is the worm's view or the very low angle shot. So here, the photographer is almost on the ground taking pictures of his or her subject. That's why it is known as very low angle shot. Another thing that our student journalists must be aware of to achieve composition is to consider the following subject distances. So we have three the long shot, the medium shot, and the close-up shot. For the close-up shot, it would mean that the subject is three feet away from the photographer. For the medium shot, the subject is seven feet away from the photographer. And for the long shot, the subject could be 15 feet away from the photographer. Further, when we say long shot, it is a camera shot that shows the entire subject from head to toe and even the place where the subject is. Examples would be these pictures. Okay, You can see the subject and the place where the subject is located. Next is the medium shot. It is known as the mid shot or the waist shot. Meaning to say the subject in the, the, subject in the picture is seen from the waist to head, just like in that example, and this example as well. The next is the close-up shot. It is a close-range shot that captures the minute details of the subject. Example is this one. This is a small flower, but it seemed to become bigger because it's a close-up shot. You can see the details of the flower. And this example as well, this is a close-up shot because you can see all the details of the face of the lion. Now, these are other important composition rules that we have 
to explain to our student journalists for them to be able to capture a good picture. One is there should be one center of interest, meaning there should be one subject in the picture as much as possible. And then the second is they need to avoid always locating the center of interest at the center of the frame of the picture. It means that they need to follow the rule of thirds. So when we say rule of thirds, where are they going to locate or to place their, the, the most interesting part of the picture or the subject of the picture? Should it be at the left third, at the middle third, or at the right third? In this example, the, the subject in the picture is at the right third of the frame. In this example also, the subject in the picture is at the right third of the frame. And this shot is what we call a long shot because you can see the person who is the subject and the place where the subject is. The next is action should move into the picture, not out of the picture. Just like what you can see in this example, the dog is actually moving into the picture, not out of the frame of the picture. Next is horizontal lines depict calmness and peacefulness. What is the horizontal line there? The shore. Okay, so here we have the horizontal line at the ground or at the road. And we should also explain to our student journalists that vertical lines shows power and stability. The trees in this picture, as well as the buildings, created a vertical lines. Look at this one. Uh, the shot is an example of a worm's view shot. And the trees created vertical lines. So creating diagonal lines depict motion and dynamism. It's also very nice that the students know how to use diagonal lines in taking pictures. Sometimes we call it a slitting lines, just like in this picture. The board was used to lead the viewer to the subject. The subjects here would be the students who seem to be studying very well. And then the board created a diagonal line. Look at this example. In this example, we also have diagonal line leading to the subject in the picture, which is the tree. Another one is using contrast to heighten interest. Contrasting colors. That's also a very nice uh, strategy in taking a picture. As you can see here in this example, we have the combination of the color of lettuce and the color of tomatoes, which are contrasting. Okay, so let us also discuss the A, A, E, O, U of photojournalism. A is for action, E is for emotion, I is for interaction, and O means organized, while U means uncluttered. Let's talk about examples. Here in this picture, the subject is in action. We have to always tell our photojournalists that when they are taking pictures of people, the people should always be with movement, with action. Next is, example is this one. This is in sports event. Of course, if it is a sports event, the, the people who are part of the sports will always be moving. So it is not right that they are going to shoot picture wherein the participants of the sports event are not moving or doing, doing any action. So it's better if the subjects who are people are in action. How about in this picture? The picture shows us uh, three students who are interacting with each other and they seem to be happy so they created a joyful emotion so there is interaction and there is emotion as well as in this picture there is interaction and you can see the emotions of the people in the picture in this picture you can say that this is organized because in the background of the subject 
there is nothing that would get the attention of the viewer. So the viewer of the picture will, would just focus on the subject, who are the pupils who are studying. And that is what we call the AEOU of photojournalism. I ended my talk by emphasizing that in photojournalism, we are after content over art. That's it for today. Thank you so much for listening to my discussion. I hope that you have learned something from it. And always remember that happiness is a choice, so always wear a happy heart.